welcome back. So, in the last lecture, uh, having completed the statistical formalism of the path integral, uh, we moved over to its spectrum of applications. The initial applications that I propose to explore is in the field of quantum mechanics. Uh, it is in the context of quantum mechanics that uh, uh, the uh, path integral enjoys the pride, po pride of position for working out the transition amplitudes in the context of quantum mechanical problems. The principle as propounded by Feynman uh, on the basis of uh, earlier work done by Derek and his own ingenuity is that uh, a, for a given a particle or a uh, equivalently a wave that travels a path which is a world line in space time between two events, then we could view it as a comprising of uh, we could view the transition as comprising of all infinite paths moving from the initial point to the destination point. Uh, however, each of those paths need to be weighted by a factor which is uh, uh, related to the classical action and which is given by exponential i upon h bar uh, uh, s of um, x, uh, x of t. So, this is the weighting factor uh, with which each path is weighted and then we arrive at the expression for the transition amplitude. Now, and then I moved over to the discussion on the construction of a moving basis, but uh, a bit of a preliminary knowledge would help in that context. Uh, the first thing that we encounter of course, is the quantum state in contrast to the classical state of a system, which is usually represented either in configuration space or in phase space velocity or momentum phase space. Uh, in contrast, the quantum state which encodes all the measurable information about the physical state is uh, represented in a Hilbert space and, uh, and which is a complete space with uh, an inner product defined on it. Uh, the second important term that f um, makes its presence uh, frequently in quantum mechanics is the concept of wave function. Uh, uh, if we expand the state vector uh, in a particular basis, for example, the, the position basis or the momentum basis, then the components or the coefficients of that basis vectors represent the wave functions uh, in that particular basis and they are called the position or momentum wave functions. For example, if I have a state vector represented by the ket phi si ket psi, uh, then we can obtain the wave functions corresponding uh, the coefficients representing the wave functions at various uh, basis points uh, uh, by the integral of this expression, which clearly shows the expansion. Uh, expansion of the state vector in terms of these wave functions on a basis represented by the ket skew. Similarly, we can have in momentum space, uh, we can have the uh, wave function representation in the momentum space as well, uh, it is pa uh, parallel to what we have in the position space. Right. Now, uh, as far as time evolution is concerned, again there are two, uh, actually there are three pictures, but uh, we have the Schrodinger picture, we have the Heisenberg picture and we have the interaction picture. For the moment, let us focus on the Schrodinger and the Heisenberg picture. In the Schrodinger picture, the time evolution is captured by the time dependent Schrodinger equation, which is uh, given in the slide, uh, the first equation on the slide and uh, the solution to the slide takes the form of uh, the state vector and the time dependent state vector or time evolved state vector which is given by uh, phi psi of t is equal to u t psi of 0 where u is the evolution operator and u is given uh, u has to be unitary first of all in order to preserve probabilities and secondly u t is given by exponential minus i upon h uh, i upon h bar into h t where a capital H is the Hamiltonian and the unitarity of u t requires or mandates that h needs to be self adjoint. Uh, the unit unitarity requirement follows uh, directly from the requirement of conservation of probability, conservation of inner product and in order that the inner pro product be conserved, it is necessary that the unitarity of the 
uh, uh, of the evolution operator time evolution operator be preserved which corresponds to the fact that the Hamiltonian should be um, a self adjoint operator. Now, we see the, in the context of quant quantum mechanics is basically a statistical theory and the uh, the, um, the quantities that are relevant for us are expectation values. For example, if we want to work out the ex expectation value of an observable, we make use of the formula that is given on your slide. The expectation value of an observable represented by the operator at a point, point in time t O of t is given by uh, sandwiching O. Uh, the uh, operator uh, representing that observable between the time time evolved uh, wave functions phi uh, psi t and uh, psi t at the point at which the observation is to be made. Now, the important point here is if you look at this carefully, the operator does not carry any time dependence. O which is given in this expression does not carry any time dependence. The time dependence is captured by the, the wave vector or the state vector quantum state which, which incorporates which embeds the time dependence. The operator is time independent. This is called the Schrodinger picture. Uh, in the Schrodinger picture, the evolution is such the state vector evolves in time whereas, operator representing the observable does not evolve in time uh, and that is fundamental. Now, let us see what happens in the Heisenberg picture. We can write the above expression uh, for the expectation value of the operator O t as uh, this which was there in the earlier slide. We can write it in the form of uh, by introducing a unitary uh, transformation, we can write it in the form psi of 0 u conjugate t 0 O u t 0 psi of 0, where we we have incorporated. Now, what have we done? We have simply represented the bras and cats psi t in, in terms of their respective values at psi 0 or in respect of their evolution from psi 0 to psi t. It, um, the unitary operators u represent the evolution of the state vector from t equal to 0 to t equal to the given point at which the identification is being considered. Now, we can write this in the form uh, of psi 0 and we can identify instead of identifying O as it is, we identify O with a transformation u conjugate O u. The operator is now evolving. Now, the operator carries the time dependence. Uh, earlier, we had the operator time independent, time operator had not evolved, it was the state vectors which had evolved and we had applied the evolved state vector on the operator which was time independent to get the average value. Now, what has happened is the states are the states at t equal to 0, the states remain the states at t equal to 0. However, the operator instead of being the operator at t equal to 0 has now evolved in time according to this to its op, uh, to uh, its value or to its expression at time t uh, equal to the given observation point and we can write it in this form we are now o t is the evolved operator acting on the initial state so we have two situations very clearly seen from here one situation where the operator is time independent operator does not evolve in time it acts on the state which evolves in time on the other hand the other situation is the states do not evolve in evolve in time and the operator evolves in time and the evolved operator acts on the state which is fixed in time. So, and we can see that both these schemes or the both these interpretations lead us to the same expectation value of O t. So, they are and no, I know as I mentioned at the start, it is the expectation values that are relevant in the context of quantum mechanics, it is a statistical theory. So, because we arrive at the same expectations so in the context of both the formalisms, it follows, it follows that the two formalisms are equi equivalent. Uh, the first formalism where the state vector evolves, the operator does not evolve is called the Schrodinger picture and in the second formalism where the 
um, where the state vector does not evolve and the operator evolves in time, operator representing the given observable, the operator evolves in time is called the Heisenberg picture, right. So, that is basically the difference between the two and they are equivalent as I mentioned. This is the expression in the red font summarizes what we have discussed. The operator is evolving like this and it acts on the state vector at t equal to 0 and this gives us the same expression where the operator is unevolved, but it acts on the state vector which is evolved at t as per the time evolution captured by the Hamiltonian. Now, in the la last uh, lecture we discuss uh, the preliminary work with respect to the construction of the moving basis and we discuss the important point that the operator uh, Q Heisenberg operator will be operating in, in the Heisenberg picture. The Heisenberg operator, the time evolved operator acts on the time evolved state and we again get the uh, eigenvalue q uh, with respect to the time evolved state. In other words, given that given that we have a Schrodinger state uh, uh, at t equal to 0 with, with the eigenvalue q, uh, the, if we given that we have a Schrodinger state or a t state at t equal to 0 acted on an operator which yields an eigenvalue q, if the operator is evolved in time and the state vector is also evolved in time, we get another expression which where we get uh, the same eigenvalue q uh, uh, on, on in consequence of a measurement made on the time evolved state vector. Right. So, this is what is called a moving basis, a basis where we have a functional dependence on time. Now, the operator q h t, h represents its Heisenberg operator and carries the time dependence. So, q h t has a complete set of eigenstates. This is clearly seen from the expression, the last expression on the previous slide. This q h t is equal to q, q h t operating on the ket q comma t, ket q comma t the time evolved ket uh, gives you q into the q comma t. This uh, in other words we are getting uh, eigenvalue q with the uh, with the measurement performed by the operator q h t on this. This is the working it is quite straightforward uh, uh, not much of explanation involved here, but it, it gives us this outcome. And this outcome clearly shows that firstly this q h t has the, this this states q t this because the state q it forms a complete uh, set of states of the operator q s. Therefore, q h t or q t also forms a complete set of states of the operator q h t, right. So, that is one part. The second part is and, and, and as a consequent of this what I have mentioned, uh, we also have this expression that uh, the identity operator can be written as the uh, as the in the completeness relation as the integral of d q dash q dash t dash which will as you will see instead of q dash t dash we can also use the expression q dash uh, t dash and the um, ket and the bra uh, in this form in this form q dash t dash and q dash and t dash in other words this moving basis q or comprising of these uh, eigenstates q comma t uh, is a complete uh, basis that is the first part. The second part is the orthonormality uh, to see the orthonormality it is easily seen uh, th because the original states the Schrodinger states uh, q dash uh, form a complete set. Uh, they can be written as a partition of unity and thereafter uh, or as a consequence of that to multiplying uh, or introducing these factors e to the power plus i h t e to the power minus i h t in the form as shown in, the, in this equation. We find the time evolved state also obeying the relation of um, completeness integral d q dash 
q dash t q dash t is equal to 1 that is one part and the uh, inner product uh, as you can see also the inner product is uh, unchanged as the states evolve q dash t um, um, uh, um, have forming an inner product with q t gives us the direct delta function of q minus q dash. So, the states are um, the basis that we have talked about comprising of q comma t uh, uh, is complete and it is also orthonormal right. Now, we talk about the propagator the, the transition amplitude represented by this expression the a scalar product of q dash t dash q dash q double dash t dash and q dash t dash uh, is what we call the uh, propagator it it basically the transition amplitude uh, uh, and it is also given the name of the propagator it represents the probability amplitudes associated with the decomposition of psi q double dash t double dash in terms of psi q dash t dash uh, in other words, you have a initial state q dash t dash and uh, the state evolves to uh, or uh, is expected to evolve to a state q double dash t double dash then this quantity gives you the transition amplitude the square of which or the modulus of uh, uh, um, the square of the modulus will give you the probability of the evolution of this uh, state that is the state q dash t dash evolving to the state q double dash at time t double dash. Given the initial state q dash t dash the probability uh, of its evolving to the state q double dash at time t double dash is captured by the probability amplitude which is the scalar product and which is also called the propagator. Now, this propagator is also called the transition it, uh, uh, amplitude as I mentioned. Uh, it is also the two point correlation function because it relates to two points in space time and uh, so that is important. It, the, uh, you, we also use the notation uh, in, the, in this form to represent this q double dash t double dash uh, scale, uh, scalar produced in product with uh, q dash t dash in terms of the, the kernel or the green function uh, which is k q dash t dash the initial state and q double dash t double dash. So, the propagator is essentially the transition amplitude and uh, uh, it is also the two point correlation function because it relates to two, po two uh, points in the uh, uh, space time uh, continuum right. So, we can also express uh, we also find because this is an inner product of these two states, uh, it is also the overlap between the an eigen state of q t dash because the ket here is an eigen state of q t dash and with eigen value q dash and an eigen state of q t double dash uh, with eigen value q double is quite simple to see that because of the property of the moving basis uh, the operator q t dash acting on this uh, uh, basis vector q dash t dash gives us the eigen value q dash. Uh, similarly, uh, if we operate q double dash uh, q t double dash on this particular operator q double dash uh, t double dash we get the eigen value q double dash. So, the inner product is nothing but the uh, projection of the eigenstate of uh, the operator uh, q t double dash uh, t dash with eigen value q dash and the operator q t double dash with the eigen value q double dash. It is quite simple to see um, uh, using the uh, property of the moving basis that we have done. Right. Um, now, the transition amplitude or the propagator that we have talked about is the represents the time evolution operator that is also uh, easy to see here simple properties uh, uh, using the properties of the identity operator the completeness of the basis q dash uh, and, uh, and our moving basis uh, q dash q dash t dash subject to q and q dash 
treated as the completeness of the spaces gives us this condition, this decomposition of identity, partitioning of identity and this, that gives us what? That gives us that the wave function at q double dash t double dash which is the scalar product of q double dash t double dash with psi with the state vector psi, it can be written in this form by introducing the uh, partition of identity uh, this expression this this part together with this integration gives us the partition of identity incorporating this complete set of states uh, um, in the moving basis we have this expression and now if you look carefully this expression is nothing but the transition amplitude nothing but the propagator. So, this expression becomes the propagator and this expression is nothing but the wave function at time t dash uh, uh, with the position uh, q dash. So, uh, to repeat this integration uh, over by introducing a complete set of states what we get here is q double dash t double dash q dash t dash q dash t dash in phi uh, psi and uh, q double dash t double dash q dash t dash is nothing but the propagator, this part is the propagator and q dash t dash subject to psi is nothing but the nothing but the wave function at q dash t dash. So, what we end up with is this expression and this expression can be written in this form and this is nothing but our propagator. So, our propagator is nothing but the time evolution operator. When this propagator acts on psi at q dash t dash, we get the outcome of psi at q double dash t double dash. So, so we can in some sense we can uh, uh, relate k, uh, k q dash t dash q double dash t double dash as the time evolution operator. We will continue from here. Thank you.